Episode 9, Seth Morales, President of the Morales Group. Welcome to Gut Plus Science. Analytics about people. Insights for executives. Truth you can act on. A high-energy, fast-paced, results-oriented exchange featuring employee engagement evangelist and CEO, your host, Nikki Llewellyn. All right, welcome back to Gut Plus Science. I have the honor of just talking to some really amazing people. And sometimes I know them personally, like I do today, and other times I get to do a short call with them and get inspired by them right before the show, and we have amazing conversations. Today, I really have to prep this uh, episode because it's so chock full of all the things that I personally want to learn about from Seth Morales over at Morales Group. I don't know how many of you see the brand or the leadership team that is just um, committed, committed to getting out in the community and doing amazing work. I mean, not just our community locally throughout, you know, the Midwest, but I'm saying out in the world, doing amazing things in other countries and getting their people out and truly changing the world. We're going to break down a couple of key things today. Um, one is service. And, you know, many of us have this as a core value. It's written on our walls. We're servant leaders. When we see someone that is really walking that talk, they're they are walking the walk, they're walking the talk, whatever you want to call it, and out in the community, and you just constantly see anyone with the brand Morales Group, they are walking that servant leadership uh, rope for sure. The next is recognition. So programs in many companies are obsolete, might happen once a year. There's not much of a regular cadence. Um, we do a lot of things wrong across the board with many of our companies when it comes to recognition. On the other hand, I know that Morales Group has really made this a um, an addiction in their company and for a great reason because it ties into their cause and their why. It's not just about an individual getting kudos, which is awesome, but it ties back to the overall vision of the company and their core why, which is just too cool. And the third thing is diversity. How many of us have that on our list? We've been thinking, how can we be more diverse? We've been, you know, climbing up the hill or, you know, paddling upstream trying to figure this out. Well, we've got a number of tips, I'm sure, to be able to walk away with because it's one of the best companies I know at diversity. So um, today's show is going to be with Seth Morales, president of Morales Group. You know, um, like I said, I can't say enough about the great things that they, that Seth and the leadership team at Morales are doing in the community, but Seth was recently appointed by Co Governor Pence to serve on Indiana, the, the Commission for Hispanic Latino Affairs, and um, has adopted this new program or um, leadership in the program for Project Stepping Stone, which uh, helps Hispanic high school students successfully prepare for college and just have higher succession rates. Seth um, was a football player at Purdue University and um, was the honorary captain of the Purdue Big Ten Championship football team and got his MBA at Notre Dame. And Seth is proud to say that his Christian faith influences almost every decision he makes. So we're so excited to welcome Seth to the show today and to dive into all these hot topics that all of us want to know. Before I do that, um, I want to quickly do a sponsor break. I want to hear from our sponsor and we'll come right back. Are you still using Pulse surveys? How about annual questionnaires? If your organization relies on either of these, it's time to discover Amplify. Amplify has created a new way to measure employee engagement. It's where CEOs who want to know what's really happening within a workforce go to get honest feedback and to understand what needs to change for people to love their work. Companies that have used Amplify have increased productivity by as much as 30% in just three months. Best of all, it's not just data that Amplify provides. Executives get hands-on coaching with engagement specialists, people who know exactly what to do with the data. To see their latest research on employee engagement, visit Amplify.com. All right, we're back on Gut Plus Science with Seth Morales. So 
Seth, um, before I open up, I want to kind of take people back um, through the adventure of getting to where you are and building this company, an amazing culture and story uh, of the Morales Group. So the company started in 2003, but you talk about the pivot point was really 2012 when the company just, re- it, you'd always done well, but it started to explode when you really had this central focus around your purpose and, and vision and mission and have gone from 30 to 90 million dollars in the past six years. And so I want you to take us back and tell us about what was that pivot point in 2012? In a nutshell, 2012, we had hit that 30 million mark and we've been in business for almost nine or 10 years at that point. And we, we kind of, we hit kind of a, I think a, an impasse where we weren't necessarily growing as quickly as we had early on. And what it boiled down to is we just didn't have uh, leadership that was evenly yoked, and we had two different kind of missions and visions on how uh, the company would operate. And so, once we were able to kind of get one voice, one leader, and, and one kind of um, why we we do what we do, that really helped our business take off. And we finally got leadership all on the same page, and the organization started to react and just engage clearly. And we just we we blew the business up. We we took it from 30 to 90 million, like you mentioned. And I, I still believe to this day, it's a result of us getting culturally aligned and making sure that leadership had some clarity so the team could follow. At times, they were very confused of this philosophy versus that, and which, which direction is Morales Group going in. So that was a huge uh, shift for us to grow our business. And it, today alone, I, I think if you don't have clarity at, at the leadership level, you're, you're going to struggle with, with growth and, and engagement, just overall, just having a healthy organization. Alignment on the leadership team is just such a game changer. And, you know, to be able to have alignment plus a shared why and passion for why you come to work every day is a unique thing. And I see you guys definitely doing that at Morales Group. My question is when it comes to then trickling that effect that your leadership team has around service being the core of Morales Group. How have you infiltrated that into all of the employees? It seems like everyone has adopted that as well. Talk about that journey. I think we live it out at at the top level and it it trickles down into the the rest of the group. But there's a few things we do that I think are intentional around um, service and living out our why. The first thing is we have a program where we encourage our, our team to have at least 25 hours of service uh, annually, and we've got about 130 internal staff, and that's their job is to really invest in the community and serve. And uh, we have a passport program where you're able to get stamps for all the service hours, just kind of like you've traveled around the country, you get a stamp for every service hour. And so that's one intentional way that we we build upon the service. But then the other program that I really like, this is kind of ties in the recognition, is we've got our Legos program, which... Lego stands for loving every gift of service. And what we do is we meet monthly. So we have this intentional cadence around building this, this kind of service program. And we nominate our colleagues or peers for uh, a core value and living out kind of that core value, which is be humble, be courageous, and be a light. And when we do that, we actually physically take that Lego piece and build a house. And we build these four walls up. And uh, what that signifies is us actually eventually uh, if we're profitable enough as a company, we go down and build these homes down in Mexico as, as a kind of a bringing it back full full circle. So it's really neat kind of living out this kind of service action through our Legos program. Uh, we we built four homes this year in Mexico, and uh, we we built I think um, year to date I think we're at sixteen. So it's been fun to kind of live this out annually with our team, but it's it's very intentional. Uh, there's a good cadence to it. Uh, there's a way to kind of like live it out monthly, and then physically go down to Mexico and, and build that kind of team camaraderie and, and live out that recognition and that why. So it's a, it's very important to who we are, and I think it's been pivotal to us continuing to grow. Just incredible to align with your brand. It's it, the stories that are shared behind you know, these marketing messages and these pictures, when you see the the Morales Group employees out serving and building homes and then aligning that to great stories on, you know, different things that apply to the staffing world and tying in like employee experiences with content that you're putting out is just something so unique. Um, Seth, I want to dive in a little bit more to 
really how you've developed this um, Legos program, which in essence, it's a, it's a recognition program that ties into the why of the business. So it's all very strategic. A lot of companies, they have recognition programs, they do it, but there's not a whole lot of participation, not a whole lot of excitement. One thing I heard you say is the regular monthly cadence is important. This cannot be something that, that, hey, there's a box up front, drop your comments in or nominate somebody and you know we'll do this every once in a while. It's got to be a regular cadence. So I think that that's one key that we just got. Um, when it comes to inspiring people to nominate people or collect stories on the Morales Group employees to be able to share, how does, how does that work? It works like this. So we meet monthly. We get all the different, we have eight offices around um, the Midwest that come into Indianapolis to our corporate office and our CEO or myself get up and, and kind of read off the Legos, but it's a good way to intentionally reinforce our core values, which are be humble, be courageous, and be a light. And what's neat about it is you get these stories, whether it's um, an employee who was uh, courageous where you, you had a payroll issue with a, an employee that was upset with with their payroll hours and you were able to kind of offset that and somebody kind of went above and beyond the call of duty to be courageous in that situation. And so it's very intentional about reinforcing our core values. It reinforces our why. And with the Legos, again, it kind of brings you full circle back to we're building this house. And so we've got these miniature Lego homes that are in this like glass box and inside every office. So it's a great way to just kind of, again, kind of reinforce it. But it's it's being intentional about it. It's having fun. You know, it's one thing to kind of like put your your kind of suggestion in the box, but it's one it's another thing to kind of live it out and actually have fun with it and, and just reinforce it. So that's that's something that I think has been been key for us. I just want to go a little bit deeper because I think people are like, okay, so I just heard him say that they're spread out. They've got multiple locations. I, that I might, you know, be a listener and struggling with that. So how do you get everyone on the same system as far as these eight different locations? Is is there a leader at each location that then inspires people to submit stories? And are you doing that through a technology or are they just emailing their manager? How do you actually get those nominations? One simple way we use, we're not very sophisticated, we'll do legos at moralesgroup.net and you can you can always there's a legos address that you can send in your kind of nomination all the remote offices aside from our office down in louisville uh, kentucky are required to come in so we want them physically to be in the office here at, at corporate in indianapolis so we want the the leaders and and those that are um also the, the team so we try to we try to get almost all uh, employees that's physically in there. One thing that we do, we've got a pretty cool AV system where we can pipe people in in our kind of large gathering room that we have that we just built out. So that's cool. So you can patch in uh, folks from a remote office, but everyone is required to stop what they're doing. It would go from, I believe it's eight to nine, the first like Thursday of every month. And so it's been a good, you know, I think we've been running with the program for two years, and I, I definitely think it's increased our why, our serving, and it's reinforced the engagement of, of, of our team. So it's to me, I think it's been one of those game changers. We And we did kind of implement this, I think, a couple of years after we kind of had the, the split partnership and we, we had that kind of one vision, one voice, and that really helped. I love being able to break that down and, you know, give our listeners things that they can take back to their leadership teams and, and start to brainstorm. And that is super helpful. Okay. So Seth, I've got a question for you in the journey that you've taken to grow this business, just at the rapid speed it has been growing and just the global impact you've been making with your employees. This is a loaded question. What are you most proud of? The thing we're most proud of, or what I'm most proud of is, is the homes that we've built. Um, you can definitely kind of hang your hat on how profitable you were, or, you know, what you did from a, like a brand recognition in the community or how many employees you serve. And on average, we probably staff around 4,000 people weekly in the field. And that's a great number to kind of hang your hat on. But at the end of the day, it's a, kind of comes back to, you know, our whole purpose is to build a better future one story at a time. And when you're able to build that home and hand those keys to these folks that are just underserved and impoverished areas around the world, that makes a huge difference. It's really cool to kind of bring it back full circle. And it kind of, we wrap up the year, the calendar year. And then at the start of uh, Q1, we, we send um, our entire team down in kind of two waves to do this, um, do these home builds. And so that's a great way to kind of 
bring it all together. And it's just, it kind of culminates your year in return. So I think that's probably one of the best things that I'm most proud of. I can't imagine the stories and the energy that comes back when the team members who go out to build the house come back to the workplace. What's that like? It's great. So you build all this camaraderie, you have all these great stories, but then what's most important is that it provides this kind of lasting impact on those for serving. They remember the faces that they help serve. And it just like you, you kind of, what it does is it continues along the path just into the year. And so they share with the newbies that come in and they talk about, you know, what to expect. And so it's a great way to kind of create this culture or this legacy of how you serve. And so those stories are key and it, it's neat to get newbies down there because the first time they go down there, it's always probably the most special moment for them to do the build. But um, it, it, the thing, the most, the best part about it is it's intentional and it creates this kind of sustainable story that kind of continues to be woven through the organization. And I think that going back to what I've given some big compliments on throughout the theme of this show with you is you do such a good job of sharing stories, like stories about an employee or someone that um, you've been able to staff in the story of their life or like how working there impacts them. It just, I, I can only imagine it makes people want to put their resume in. You probably have a line out the door of people who say, I want to work for Morales Group. So just being great storytellers. I know you didn't say that, but I, I would say that you guys are excellent at that. And the better we can get at that, the less challenge we have with you know the talent war that's out there. I want to kind of transition down this road to this topic of engagement, because you have in your world, eight different locations, many different generations. You are one of the best at, at diversity, just having many different cultures and ethnicities in your organization. So let me ask you this first. What do you or how do you define employee engagement? There's a lot of surveys you can take and um, there's a lot of kind of gut check. I think when you have true data that, that comes back to you that's, you know, anonymous and it's given back to you in, a, I think, a raw format, I think that is, is really helpful. I think true engagement is when you have certain accolades that come with it, like best places to work. I think that's a, if you, if you've won one time, that might be one thing, but if you've won multiple times, I think that definitely uh, signifies that you've got some, somewhat of a healthy, engaged culture. You know, I think most importantly, when you think about what's, what's engagement look like, I think when you walk into um, somebody's offices, you pick up on a vibe that that's the gut factor. And I think there's, there's a vibe that you can sense uh, with leaders and how they're engaged with giving back and developing their team. And also you just pick it up when you walk into somebody's four walls and you get the culture, you get the vibe and you see whether their employees are engaged. That's, that's kind of the gut side of it. But I definitely, I would hang my hat on results back from a group like Amplify. I mean, it's a great way to get, you know, quantifiable data about how your team's doing and then, you know, work into those trouble spots that you need help on. So, there's there's two different ways that I think about that, but um, that's my best answer there on engagement. I love that that visual of like when you walk in, it's that energy that you feel. It's like, are people excited to bring that force and that energy to what they're doing? Or are you seeing complacency and feeling like silence? You know, everyone defines it different. So you're talking a lot about measuring engagement. And I would love to dive in just a little bit more to your world at Morales Group, the reason for the, the podcast called Gut Plus Science is it's so important to bring you know gut intuition and past experiences to help leaders make decisions on people in many different areas of the business, especially people. And then there's a, an important piece to making sure that we've got data to be able to help guide our decisions. So at Morales Group, I know you do a nice job of mixing your gut plus science to be able to hone in on those engagement strategies. Can you share, you know, how that's worked, how you've mixed some data with gut to be able to maybe confirm something or build a strategy because now you've confirmed that this is a direction we need to go? Case in point, you know, we, we use some quantifiable data through um, Amplify and we were able to take some of the engagement feedback about where we had gaps with our utilization. Um, we've got probably a team of, of 50 to 60 recruiters. And uh, we had a, a, a trouble spot here at our corporate office where they were overutilized and they needed some relief. And so gave us, you know, tangible like data points as to where we needed to kind of, you know, 
fix the trouble spots. And then we, as a team, put our heads together and said, all right, so let's create a call center to give them some relief so they can actually focus on recruiting and not worry about answering all the call-ins that were coming into the phone system. And so that was one just like tactical way that you take this data and you actually drive into how you solve it. And then you come up with some sort of tactical solution to it. So that's been a benefit for us with, with taking, you know, I think engagement and actually making it go to good use. How would you advise people to gain buy-in or ideas from their employees? Like during that process of trying to solve this problem, like once you saw that there's some data in especially this large group of people in the call center area, what would be your suggestion on how you get ideas from the employees or get their buy-in towards that change to make things better? When I think about buy-in and and getting folks to to buy into that opportunity, I think it starts with the leadership and the leadership group has to, I think, take the criticism with um, just kind of a grain of salt, but at the same time, be be humble enough to kind of pinpoint where they're completely lacking, uh, maybe kind of a, they're not, they don't have the greatest line of sight. And so I think there's opportunity for leaders to drill down into some of these areas, but they've got to be, what's the word? They've got to take the time to step back and be humble about where they drill down. And it's a tough, I think it's a tough part for for some leaders for this to to kind of figure out, you know, how they, how they truly like fix some of these problems. I think it's, you know, not letting the emotional side of, you know, a lot of times you're in a leadership role, it might be, you know, you own the company and you have so much wrapped up and this is your baby. And it's hard sometimes to hear how some employees are feeling about the company, but being able to kind of split that down the middle and say, okay, you know, I know I feel this way. I have to be able to open up and truly let them be able to share and be, you know, authentic so that they hear, they feel that I'm listening and, and open to receive that feedback. And like you said, just, just being humble in that. I think that's great. I think listening is everything, listening and acting, you know, uh, listen and then tell them, you know, based on what we've heard, here's what we're going to do. And we're, we're doing it. Let's dive into this area of diversity because um, this has not been a topic on the show really yet. And I know it's just a big thing that so many companies are working on. It's it's in a, a lot of articles right now. And mm-hmm. I think you can really share. Um, my first question when it comes to building a diverse organization is how do you become an employer that attracts uh, different ethnicities uh, to want to come to work like you have at Morales Group? Yeah, I think you you have to live it out first off. So when you walk inside the four walls at Morales Group, you you get a, a feel or a vibe that we have flavor, uh, that we embrace diversity. You see the flags of the different countries represented from all of our staff members internally. You see the different multicultural backgrounds and the different languages spoken. So you have to live it out first. I think you have to have a look and a feel that is very homey from uh, maybe somebody's home country. Uh, the second thing is, I think you need to be intentional about your outreach and how you how you engage in these different uh, diverse communities. We've got somebody on on staff that is uh, the outreach manager, and their job is to dev- develop these partnerships with, um, let's say, the Immigrant Welcome Center or Catholic Charities that works with different uh, refugees from all over the country, or an inner city group uh, like Edna Martin that works with uh, past convicted felons. And so we take the time to integrate with these different groups from all over the city, all over the community. And we have this outreach manager. And so it's a great way to dive deep into a select few of these different diverse communities and find ways to just kind of lift them up and give them an opportunity to, um, you know, have have a good chance at, at maybe working. So that's, to me, I, I think you got to be intentional about kind of living it out inside your four walls and then getting outside of your, your four walls and living it out in the community. How big of a deal is it to have partners? You're talking about many of these different community entities. When you're building out these diversity initiatives, how how big of a deal is it to make sure that you've got these allies that are um, out there in those communities in order to really make a diversity program work? I think it's made all the difference. The allies or these community partners um, come together once a month in a town hall, and it's a great way to collective you know, pass along information and uh, encourage um, building a tribe of other like-minded people that are trying to help this disconnected population or this diverse types of populations. And so I think it makes a lot of difference when you actually 
build these these kind of strategic partnerships with different community leaders and different community groups. It's been, I think, all the difference with uh, our philanthropy and our serving. And it also ties into the way we help people find jobs. It's just a great kind of full circle for us. So to me, you really have to kind of live it out and you have to play it out. Um, so it's been, a, it, I think, like a core differentiator for how we run our business. I think I heard you say there's a certain role in your organization that manages those relationships. Yeah, so we have um, an outreach manager, and their role is to uh, basically forge partnerships with our 15 different groups in the greater Indianapolis area, and then any of the other kind of outline uh, markets that we serve. And they basically just foster the relationship, make sure it's sustainable. But then in return, it, it, it provides us an opportunity to find other talent from diverse backgrounds. And then we also get to encourage our full-time staff to go and serve inside their organizations. So we partner up with like the Immigrant Welcome Center or we do different charity events for Exodus refugees. So that that piece where we've actually got a full time salary based employee that's focused on outreach, that, that's something that's very intentional, but it's made a, a huge difference for us with truly like not just casting in that that's kind of wide and narrow, but going deep and narrow with these these select partners. You hear all the time things about partnership programs and how, you know, there's just not a lot of momentum around them. And I think you just hit on something really important. You've got one person that is the conduit to own that strategy and going deep within those relationships. And it's not just a, you know, hey, everybody, you know, consistently look for partners and get the word out and share our one pagers. It's you've you've got this one person that's owning it. I think that's different. It's something something unique. Um, Seth, we're going to come right back in just uh, just a minute. We're going to hear from our sponsor. We're going to come back and then we're going to talk about what's uh, going on in Morales today. Like what's in store for the future. So hold hold with us, guys. We'll be right back. Purplelink's customized HR services will help you make your workspace joy-powered. Whether you're looking for help with recruiting, compliance, or leadership training, they listen to what you need and tailor their solutions to you. Check out purplelinkllc.com. That's purpleinkllc.com to find out how they can help your business. And look for the Joy-Powered Workspace podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. All right. So welcome back, uh, Seth. We're going to dive right into a couple questions around, um, you know, what's going on today. I'd love for you to open up and share, you know, you're, you're big on culture. Your entire leadership team is about building that culture around service. What did, could you share your biggest culture challenge as it stands today? Right now, our biggest culture challenge is, is scaling up the business and maintaining what's made us special. As, as you grow as a leader and, and your organization starts to grow, you need different systems, different technologies, and you need different talent. And um, sometimes that talent needs to, um, no, not sometimes, that talent must kind of match how you're intentional about creating that, that culture. And so that's probably our biggest challenge is as we scale up and grow, if we acquire or organically grow our business, do we have the right leadership in place? Uh, do we have the right leaders throughout the organization that buy into this cultural piece? And so. That's that's probably my biggest challenge is how do we keep this this organization healthy while we're you know on a pretty fast pace to continue to grow our business. I want to dive a little bit deeper into that. How do you create a just a platform, I guess, within the organization, especially the leadership team, to have authentic conversations? Just any tips around just being able to, you know, share where you're at and be able to, you know, truly grow because you, you, you can just be true and transparent. Like, do you feel like you've created that? And if so, how, how do you do that? How do you give suggestions on that? Yeah, I think that's taken us a while to figure out. We, we've definitely struggled in the past. You think of the old adage, you're, you're slow to hire and quick to fire. That's something that we've struggled with or authentic conversations, um, just teaching, um, a high culture organization that they need to continue to perform. So there's, I think, two ends of the spectrum. And at times we've struggled with that. But I think the biggest thing that, that we've learned that, that has been helpful is that we, we kind of manage towards our, our core values. And the core values kind of keep us in bounds with the field of play. And if you're not being humble, if you're not being a light, if you're not being courageous, then those, those conversations can help kind of drive down into 
you know, if we have an issue with a manager who's not being um, extremely humble with another department or there's some uh, delivery issues, then we can drive down into some of those conversations and be authentic. But it's taken us some time. Uh, we still don't have it figured out. You know, one thing that we've done is we've worked with a group called True You and worked on um, difficult conversations. So they come in and do a training to help us with, you know, leadership and then other uh, folks in the organization. How do you handle a difficult kind of conversation? I think there's a little bit of an art to it. I even enjoyed it in grad school when I was at Notre Dame. We had a, a book called Difficult Conversations. We had a course on that. And I thought that was one of my biggest takeaways from you know, doing that at school. So we haven't certainly figured it out, but it's a work in progress. But we really like that training that we've gotten from TrueU that's been, that's been really helpful. That's great. And I think organizations like TrueU, which I can attest, they just do great work to help all of us that, you know, no one has it all figured out. And there's so many different unique skills to leadership, let alone just becoming a more personally and professionally developed employee, many different components. And they just do that really well, helping to support the companies in the true organization. Um, Anything, any tips that you have on outside of the, the leadership level, just putting out this vibe in your, your people about development, just personal and professional development, any tips that you have around that? My biggest thing with development of people is, you know, businesses don't grow. People do. You, you need to invest. I learned from a a very successful entrepreneur uh, a few years ago. This gentleman had a a manufacturing company that was about a billion dollars in sales. And he had a non-negotiable budget item uh, to give $2,500 of development to each employee throughout his organization. He had several uh, thousands of employees that worked for him, but that was it was all about developing his team. And the better his team got, the better uh, his company became. And he ended up selling his business for about two and a half billion to Procter and Gamble. And um, he's now built a, a pretty cool leadership development um, program out in Ohio. But it really comes down to being intentional about how you invest your time and your money into development. I think. So many companies just don't get it. They, I wish they'd take the time to figure out, look, you know, you're only as strong as your, your, your top leadership. And if you don't pour into your leadership and then also pour into the different kind of levels of your organization, you're going to be passed up. And so I can't, I can't say enough how, how, how important it is. It's like just going to practice and so enjoy the process, invest in your team and really take the time to invest. I wish more companies took the time to. Um, put their money where their mouth is. But Seth, um, when it comes to the future of Morales Group, what would you say if you had to pinpoint one thing that you're most focused on developing to truly build the team of the internal employees at Morales? Well, right now, I think the biggest focus is as we scale up, you have to have the right leadership team in place. And so as a about a $100 million organization today, we've got a strong executive team but as you as you grow, you need to have a strong um, kind of second and third level, and that's where a lot of my my focus is on. How do we develop those directors and those mid level managers? And so we're trying to find ways to find the best team and, and build that out. And what happens is, as a leader, as you start to scale and grow your business, if you get the right teammates in place, the right leaders, a lot of it um, kind of takes care of itself. And one of the challenges with growing a business is you can't be everywhere. Uh, at once as you know you know 10 years ago you could and so you want that vibe you want that culture you want that engagement you want that kind of leadership style that you practice well if you can develop that in your kind of core lieutenants or, or folks that are kind of your second third tier then that's lived out and so that's the most important thing is getting that kind of second or third tier of top talent to really kind of be groomed to step up so that that's a big focus of where I'm at right now all of this is just great information. So, so far, you know, we've, we've learned from you what having a why that oozes throughout the organization looks like, feels like, and, you know, how you get people on board with that. What a recognition program that actually inspires people, which is what they're for, is to inspire people to do better work, um, what that looks like. And we've broken that down. And then 
most every company has diversity on their mind, but many are trying to get started. They're ready to ready to go, but they haven't really figured out step A. And I think a number of the um, the tips that you've given today, especially just around getting out and developing partners, learn from the people that are in those diverse populations that you want to work with, all really good stuff. Seth, I'm sure that a number of people that listen today would love to connect with you further. Um, what's the best way for them to connect with you online? Just easy way is uh, on LinkedIn, Seth Morales, uh, on my LinkedIn profile. Or if you're bold enough, you can just give me a, a text at 317-508-4791. All right, Seth, thanks again. That was an action-packed show. Guys, I told you it was going to be full of expertise and knowledge, all of the things that we're wanting to learn. And now it's my job to summarize in the truth you can act on section, which is basically your cliff notes to be able to take away some key things uh, back for stimulating conversations or to your boardroom table to help move the needle on engagement in your workplace. So a couple things. One, leadership development is so important for the executive team and middle management. The key there is focusing on your middle level managers, your um, department leaders, getting on a regular system to develop them. And if needed, bring in a third party. If you don't have it in-house, bring in someone like a true you to help to bring a a regular system, a cadence to the table um, to develop those leaders. That's great. Number two is recognition programs that really inspire action. So the Lagos program that Morales created is on their website. If you go to Morales group online, you can learn more about it. But I think the keys are creating a system on a frequent cadence. So, um, Seth, as I can, I can hear from him is all about systems and that is what grows our business and helps us scale. So creating a system on a frequent cadence, like he said, once a month is the way they do it. And they bring everyone together from all locations live, or I'm I'm guessing in some cases, if someone can't be there live, they're going to bring in a virtual platform to help them feel like they're part of that room. I've been in those rooms and they are magnetic. And I think the key to it is tying it back to the why of the organization. So having the program tie back to the overall mission and why of the business, like they're doing, recognizing people and then getting them as part of the groups that go out and change the world by building these homes, um, just really strategically done. So great, great job. Great work on the recognition program stuff. And then Third, on diversity, so a lot of us have that on our list. It's a hot topic right now. How do I attract more of a diverse workforce? And I think the key here is developing partnerships with entities that are deep in the um, the groups that you want to be part of. They have those relationships. They know the language, the lingo, the, um, the, the way to help get you as part of that and figuring out a win-win to help that entity and them help you. I, I, brilliant. So partnerships is key. And then Seth talked about having one person in your organization that owns that partnership role and their job is building the relationship, the regular communication, the next step, the action items to really make those partnerships come alive. And as Seth talked about, it is the most core key thing to developing a diverse workforce are all of these different entities that come together and make it happen. So with that, guys, we'll see you next week on Gut Plus Science. That's it for today. We're really excited about next week's show. Talk to you then. just left the world a little bit better. Now go do something with it.